the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today, today's epistle reading, appointed for this particular uh, Sunday after Pentecost. We return again to the first epistle of the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth. And we've heard a sequence about um, covering this letter to the church in Corinth. The church in Corinth wasn't in a great state. And we've heard many of the reasons why. There was gross immorality, there was factionalism, there were divides, there were people, people were a people divided. In today's epistle reading, he moves to something a little different, very much related. But it is um, looking at this from, from a different angle. In today's epistle reading, he starts by talking about himself. He starts by saying that the apostles are like spectacles to those who are seen and those who are unseen. Spectacles and spectacles of humiliation. Those who have endured so much, so much probation, so much deprivation, so much they have lost because they were fulfilling the apostolic work, because they were going to different places. They were going to different places of founding churches, spreading the gospel, telling people about this good news that this man, Jesus of Nazareth, was not just any old man, was not even just a good man, but was the Son of God and Saviour of the world. And he talks about the things that they had endured. The things that they had endured, like uh, not having a place to sleep, by being, um, like being considered to be the least of men. And yet this was, not, this was not Paul's resignation letter. This was not even Paul's resignation letter to the church in Corinth. But one thing he would write them another letter. He would go to different places. He would stay there for a couple of years, trying to make sure that this church, this community, was on solid footing. And he tells them something at the end of this epistle. Though you have, you can have 10,000 instructors. Consider the, the time where we're talking about 10,000 would have been a great city. You may have a whole great city of instructors, but you do not have many fathers. For, says the Apostle Paul, I have begotten you through the gospel. Many of us have the experience of that one teacher in school. There, where we, where some, some were not great, but there was one, perhaps, that inspired us to go in one direction or another, that helped us when we needed the help. We may have found this experience in, in a number of other places as well, perhaps a, a coach for a sporting team, perhaps someone who guided us along the way, perhaps even a catechist, someone who, who instructed us in the faith. And these things are very important there's no indication in, in anywhere that the catechist role is unimportant, that a teacher's role is unimportant. But though you may have 10,000 of these important people, you, have, you do not have many fathers. And in the case of the Church of Corinth, it was the, it was the Apostle Paul who had begot them, from whom they were begotten or born of through the gospel. Despite not baptizing many, it was from him that their faith had begun. From him that they had heard that Christ is risen and is the Savior. So when we look to who it is that is this Father for each of us, the 10,000 instructors aren't cited as even having a continuing connection with any of us. 
but the not many fathers. This is linked to the apostles and what they went through. You see, a father is not a teacher. A parent is not a teacher. <coughs> Teachers will go, they will perform their, their work, they will, they will even go beyond the call of duty of them. And they will remember their students. But for their children, it's generally not even a contest. <coughs> for children, a parent is willing to go through all kinds of suffering, go through all kinds of deprivation for the sake of the, of the lives that they brought into the world. They're willing to, uh, I've been told a number of times of people who uh, willingly went without meals for the sake of their children so that they would be able to eat. People who, um, not only who went without the latest and fanciest, but went without things entirely because the most important thing that they could do was to show their sacrifice for their children. To make sure that they were well kept, well kept, that they were well looked after and raised as well as possible. When we look to parents in the gospel, the same <coughs> applies. The 10,000 instructors, those that we see um, and we see who are teaching the people, this teaching can be of great benefit. But it's not, it isn't the same as being raised. It isn't the same process as having someone who, who suffers on behalf of the people that they are raising. And whether that's, whether that's in a human sense or in an ecclesial sense like we see here, we may have 10,000 instructors but we do not have many fathers. We do not have many of those who go without so that we may have. And this is what gives the Apostle Paul the authority to conclude today's epistle reading with, therefore imitate me. It's what parents say to children often. Be like me. Be like us in these ways. There will come a point in time where, where variety is necessary. But the, the best method of teaching is the example that we set. The best method of teaching in any area is by example. And so therefore... Because the Apostle has been through this, been through all the things, we can read all about them in Acts. Because he has been through all of these things, therefore we ought to listen to him. Therefore we recognize him as Father. And therefore we follow in his footsteps, knowing that those footsteps will take us to Christ. When we look for our own instructors, let us not forget the fathers in the faith, those who have reared us, those from whom we have benefited. We'll recognize them by what they, by what they went without for us, and we'll imitate them just as the church in Corinth would do. Amen.